When it comes to Space Marines, one of the greatest things I love reading about is their resolve and resistance when facing unbeatable odds. Reading about heroic last stands, champions and heroes facing down a multitude of foes and living to tell the tale, or in some of the most amazing instances, sacrificing their lives in the Emperor's name. This is why I've chosen the Knights of Blood to start my new series looking at Space Marines facing down unbeatable odds. The Last Stand of the Knights of Blood is a tale that stuck with me, because unlike others, they were declared traitors by the Imperium, but still chose to fight its foes and protect humanity. Please be aware the following video will contain spoilers for Guy Haley's novel Devastation of Baal. If you're currently reading the book or have yet to read it and don't want to be spoiled, please exit this video now. The Knights of Blood hail from the gene lineage of Sanguinius. The information we have gives no dates on when they were founded. What we do know is that from their birth, they launched themselves upon the stars, purging all those who stood against the Emperor's ideals. As noble as Lord Sanguinius is, his sons hold a dark secret. A craving of blood and death is woven into their very souls. The Red Thirst and the Black Rage. This would be the chapter's damnation. The Knights of Blood, through their many battles, began to weave an image of themselves upon the Imperium. Their brutality became their downfall. Due to their excess nature in battle, they were declared renegades by the High Lords of Terror, damned in the eyes of the Emperor by lesser men serving their own cause. After they were declared renegades, the Knights of Blood vanished for a short while, but they would not let themselves be judged by mere mortals. Only the Emperor had the right to judge his Space Marines. They refused the Edict, and the Knights of Blood continued to serve the Imperium, even if the Imperium wanted rid of them. The chapter appeared unannounced at many Imperial worlds who needed their aid. Only in dire circumstances did the Imperial officials accept their assistance. Some even refused. To accept the help from a chapter damned by the High Lords themselves would bring the gaze of the Inquisition upon them. As noble as they were, the chapter met its end on Baal itself. The Tyranids of Hively Leviathan had massed a great force and was heading to Baal to wipe out the Blood Angels and the planet. Chapter Master Dante of the Blood Angels put out a call for aid for all loyal sons of Sanguinius to return to their Gene Father's homeworld and help defend against the incoming Xenos threat. Many sons of Sanguinius answered the call. The Knights of Blood were one of them. The chapter master of the Knights of Blood, Centaur Jewel, chose to keep his chapter at a distance from his fellow Gene brothers, lest he taint them with their own damnation. Soon enough, High Fleet Leviathan hit the Baal system with an overwhelming force. Within days, the fleet above Baal and its moons were either destroyed or forced into retreating, giving the Xenos dominance to land as many of their warriors upon the surface as possible. The force was vastly overwhelming. 30,000 sons of Sanguinius and countless humans stood against the foe, but it was too little. Day by day, chapters received heavy losses. Heroes were slain and positions were lost. Through all of this, the Knights of Blood fought against their foes, making each step they lost cost the enemy dearly. Another chapter, the Flesh Terrors, who were on the edge of damnation themselves, were forced to ally with the Knights of Blood. Gabriel Seth, their chapter master, saw this as a mistrust from Dante. Seth actively avoided the Knights of Blood, but with the overwhelming odds stacking against them, the only way to survive was to draw blades together. The final stand of the Knights of Blood came with the birth of the Great Rift itself. A warp portal opened up on the planet and from it came their ancient foe, Carbando. Only he would bring death and despair to the Sons of Sanguinius, no one else. Carbanda and his demonic kin set upon the Tyranids and Space Marines alike, unleashing more death and destruction. The Knights of Blood saw that they and the Flesh Terrors could not fight and win against both of these forces. Chapter Master Centaur Jewel turned to Chapter Master Gabriel Seth and spoke to him. He explained that it was him himself that requested to fight alongside the Flesh Terrors, as they walked the very same steps of damnation that they had walked. He warned Seth 
that the Knights of Blood had begun to mutate with the flaw of the Blood Angels and were slowly turning into the monsters that the Imperium had banished them to be. If Seth would not change his chapter's course, then they would have the same fate as the Knights of Blood. With that, Chapter Master Centaur Jewel gave the order to the Knights of Blood for a glorious last charge into the enemy hordes, allowing Seth and what remained of his warriors to escape. As Gabriel Seth evacuated with his men, he shed a single tear as the Knights of Blood gave in to their urges and became the beasts and monsters they were damned to be, wreaking destruction upon the enemies of mankind. In the midst of the blood and the carnage, Centaur Jewel came face to face with Carbunda himself. The ancient enemy offered the chapter master an eternity of bloodshed in Korn's name. As the Knights of Blood fell, and gave their lives for the Imperium they held so dear. One final act of defiance raged from the chapter master. Sanguinius banished you. I cannot. I come to give you my testament, demon. They call us monsters, rightfully so. But let it be known to you and your master that it is Sanguinius's fury that gives me strength, not bastard corns. The Knights of Blood died. By their blood they were martyred. In their blood, they were saved. Both Dante and Gabriel Seth acknowledged they died as heroes, loyal to the Imperium. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I would love to get any type of feedback for this new series, even suggestions on what Space Marine last stands and battles you'd like me to cover next. Have a great day and see you next time.